there's a there was a few um recent articles out you know boris johnson said it alan sugar said it about people returning to the office people being lazy at home and returning to the office what and, and you touched on there what, what's your view on the sort of the, the the recent trial that's coming out around 100 percent productivity for 80 percent of your time for 100 percent of the pay so basically in in I'm not going to jazz that up. To me, that's just basically <laughs> working one day a week less for the same money and and, and doing potentially twenty percent less work. I don't see it as hundred percent productivity if you're having a day off. So, what, what's your view on that? Can that work in the IT channel? It possibly can in certain organisations, but I think it's it depends on. For for me, I'm a bit like you. I, 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 but but I, I'm also open to sort of learning new ways of doing things as well. So I'm not I'm not, I'm not close to the idea, and I think I spoke to you at lunch about. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday has been instilled in as, as the working week since the industrial age, and it's still that weekend five five day working week. So, I'm 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 open to how that could look going forward, but I think it's a question of making sure that you again it comes back to your organisational sort of culture to make sure that people are are working for the business in the right way. Because I'll come up with the example of Friday afternoon, it's it, it, it's an actual day off in the calendar of said employee and a customer problem comes in comes in and it's their customer do you take the call or not take the call no the right the, <laughs> I'm but, 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 no, but and some people some depends, people won't depends, take the call some people want to take the call you have to take the call and you have to triage it to make sure that customer gets exactly what they need on that working day and i think that obviously be, there needs to be some staggered work patterns and things like that but for me, if you're a customer-focused organisation that's focused on making sure you do the right things by the customer, yes, it could work. But if you haven't got a strong underlying base um, of, of staff with the right with the right attitude, it would fail. Let's let's bring it. Let's bring it. Let's let's bring the listeners up to date. So, after eleven years, you decided that you didn't want to work for yourself anymore. Um, or maybe you did actually because mm-hmm. you left. You, you obviously made the the leave to leave Brock. What 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 was the, the thought process there? What made your decision? Because you're obviously you'd grown it. It was your baby. You started. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, I think we, we, to, to to cut a long story short, I think both both in our early fortunes at that particular point in time, we both had slightly different thought processes about what we wanted to take the business, um, and we looked at options of, of how we could make that happen. <laughs> we both wanted to go. <coughs> Um, do, do, do something for ourselves. We look, we looked at taking some investment in and looking at that as an option. Um, and I decided that after that was that was not going to sort of go anywhere. That that I was effectively leave the business. Mm. So after that, you had a, a couple of years off. What what was that period like? You help your probably your golf handicap got got good. You're a yeah, scratch golf. golfer, a one, is it? Yeah, that's right. I've, uh, I've managed to sort of maintain it, it. Up again. Maintain it to a large extent. But yeah, I, I, I've been keen golfer since I was young. But I think the, I had a bit of time doing a house renovation and a few bits and pieces. But um, after about year 18 months thinking about, I, I missed the sort of daily buzz of, of running a business and sort of making decisions. Um, and I thought how best could I sort of bridge the gap until I could find the right next opportunity and I did some um, non-exec and director and advisory work with with, with, with a couple of companies um, which was which was really enjoyable to be honest and then that, that that provided the sort of platform for me to do some meaningful work while I while, while I found the opportunity and eventually joined Tiger and I know you, you've recently left Tiger so what what's the sort of plan now um, John because you, you obviously enjoy the, 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 the non-exec work will you continue doing that I, I, I've got like one op- one thing that I'm working on at the moment, just advising a, a small business on how they they can grow and put a, put a plan in place. But but the plan for me now is is to get back into into full time work and get into a, a a significant project where I can help a company scale. That's what I'm looking for at the moment. So talking of leadership, you wrote a, a recent article on LinkedIn about the need for authenticity in leadership. Yeah. What? Why do you think that's so important to be authentic? I think. Going back from my sort of early stages of my career, I think that's sort of I found it easy to probably say that because that's that's how I am. I'm quite honest, quite straightforward, and quite quite easy to sort of read and understand. I think why it's important, as I say, from me advising other people to sort of be that way is 
it's, it's, you can't hide anywhere anymore. We, 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 again, we've been speaking about it around social media, LinkedIn. You have to be who you are and you have to bring, you, bring, bring yourself to the workplace. You can't be two different people and, mm. and, and have two different t- different personalities at home and, and, and in the workplace. And it's much, it's, it's much easier. And I think y- your staff really respond to it when you show that um, sometimes weaker, vulnerable side that, that leaders often find difficult to show. Yeah. When you don't have the answer to all of the questions, and and and, and I think that's again that's, that's probably an advice thing. Don't think you have answers to all of the questions. Surround yourself with other people and listen to other opinions, and make sure that you you um you you search for those other opinions that 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 can add real value into the business. And don't think you have all the answers as, as a leader. I think. You've got to be truthful and honest, straightforward and, and consistent. But those those are the things that I think are really important in, in, in this in this day, really. And I think they've ser- certainly served me in good stead anyway. What advice would you give to sort of people who was considering going into a leadership role? Because it's it's certainly not for everyone, isn't it? You know, no. I think people think, you know, it, it's it's an easy gig. I, I don't see it as an easy gig. I don't see it for leaders or and CEOs. I, I don't see that as an easy gig for anyone. So if anyone's sort of contemplating, thinking, well, I actually want to go into the leadership role or whether it's a sales director or a CEO, what advice would you give them to sort of before they consider doing it? Yeah, d- d- just prepare yourself. So that I, I think it's it's lonely at the top. Um, and, mm. I, and, I, and I think that's why you've seen a lot of companies now really open to how their, their board um, looks and feels and bringing in non-exec directors so yeah. positions that are that people that really understand and have been there uh, and understand the type of business that you are and, and the customers that you sell into a market relevant Ned is is something that I think more 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 younger businesses are now open to than what we were yeah. we brought one in after about nine or ten years whereas in hindsight perhaps might have been I've added even more value if we'd have brought them in earlier so I think having that sounding board, like I had a business partner for a, a, a block, having that sounding board where you're on the same wavelength as somebody so you can bounce ideas off them, that, that, that's that's obviously important, but you're not always going to have that. You haven't got that. No. So, so it's working out who, how are you going to build a team around you and how are you going to sort of operate as a, as, a, as, a, as a team? Because my advice would be recruit the best people you can around you and don't be too precious about trying to know everything about every single subject. Try and recruit domain experts. My last question, John, over, over, well, actually I've got two. Do, do you ever actually regret starting your, your business? Do you, do you ever sort of think, do you know what, it would have been easy to work for no. for someone else? You never no. sort of think, oh, do you know what, it was too much hard work doing that. No, no, absolutely no way. It's 110% one of the best things I've ever done. Um, it's, would you do it again? Would you do it again? Would you sort of think, oh, actually, I'll start another business? I know you're sort of. If I wasn't so old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For all the listeners out there, I won't say John John's age, but he's not old. He's not old. <laughs> but but I, I think I would. I, I, I would if I had the, had the right idea. Yeah, I think it's all, I think it's all about the solution and the idea that you've got. And if if that if that was significant enough, I would do it again. But I'd, I'd probably use the lessons that I've, and the experience that I've got now lessons that I've learned to accelerate that sort of startup phase where that sort of first two or three years is quite quite difficult and quite slow. Mm. I try and I obviously look at potential investment to help me do that and accelerate it as well. So my last question, and it will be for the listeners that are during the pandemic, I think people are taking a lot of reevaluation of life, um, goals, what they want to do. Um, people have got a bit more braver as well, thinking actually maybe I could start a company, maybe I could start a business, or maybe I could work from home four days a week. So for all the listeners out there that are working in the channel that are thinking actually maybe I would think about starting a business, what advice would you give to them to sort of think this is what you should consider before you actually go ahead and, and take the leap? Because I, I you, you said it at lunch, and I, I was actually thinking, you, you said to me, Mark, it's not often someone just takes a leap and, and does it. And I was thinking, when I, when I started here, my, my business... I was a recruiter for a year and I just did hand my notice in and start and there was no plan. Um, but I was just going to, I was a sales guy. So I was a recruiter. So I was confident enough. When you started your company, I'd have been worried. I'd be thinking technical guy, can he get any sales? Who knows? It could be a complete disaster. And it, obviously it wasn't. 
So when somebody's when someone's thinking about their, you know, they've got an idea. They were talking about names of companies like you were, but they really want to take that leap. What should they be considering before they do that? Well, probably a hundred different things, isn't there? But I, I'd say, obviously, your, your your idea needs to be good and sound, and you need to do do your research around how you're going to position yourself in the market, what what your differentiator is going to be, that type of stuff. So, so assuming all that's in place. Yeah, I, I do believe, I'm a big believer in that not all these entrepreneurs that you feel jump off the edge of a cliff and in, into the abyss. That's not the case. Um, Bill Gates is the best example of that. Left his college place open while they started at Microsoft. This was like, he didn't leave it open because he knew Microsoft was going to be an undoubted success. Obviously it was. But he left, he left his college place open just in case it didn't work out yeah. for the first six to eight, eight months. So I think that's where I, th- I think that's where it's um, so, so, so like if, if say Bill Gates is an example he, he, and look, look at my example I made calculated moves around how we would transition from being an employee contractor mm-hmm. build up trust with a client yeah. became the first client flipped over to Block and we, but we both did that together in a, quite a calculated measured way with about Fifty, sixty thousand pound in the bank. Not, not, not a great deal, but we knew that with the consultancy engagement that we had going on with them, that we we, we generate some revenue early, and then we can reinvest in the company. I think that that's think think about what you're going to do and how you're going to do it and the steps that you're going to take to do it. I think if you're going to if if you assume they've already done it and they're and they're, and they're in there, is just be brave and and make sure you keep making decisions you're going to make thousands and thousands of decisions within the business and you can't afford to procrastinate for too long in one place so get the information get opinions discuss but make make, make decisions on, on a path forward an agreed path forward with your teams and keep just keep doing that on a on a, on a regular basis because it's, it's so critically important and sometimes you've got to trust your gut yeah. you will have to trust your gut your gut's often pretty good, I'd say. Is so to be brave is the advice I'd give. Brilliant, John. You've been a great guest. Thanks so much for your Thanks time. So much. Cheers, Cheers. Man. Thank you. Thank you.